Hello and welcome again to Big Five Startup City Talk. This is your host, Abe Saksak. And today I have a great guest, Jeff Hoffman. Hi, Jeff. Hey, thank you so much for having me today. Let me just tell you brief about me. Uh, I am a serial entrepreneur based out of MENA. Uh, I've had three exits uh, so far in the last 15 years when it comes to tech. And I right now uh, work as the managing director and um, uh, CEO of Startup Bootcamp for both MENA uh, and Russia. And currently I help a lot of startups, uh, especially uh, early startups, to get their products to market and help and scale them. I'd love to hear more about what you do and about you yourself. So I am a, a longtime serial entrepreneur, mostly in tech. Um, I've done a little bit, a uh, mix of uh, mostly e-commerce, uh, but one of my first uh, startups ever was actually a physical device. Uh, uh, my first startup was creating the kiosks that people use to check in at airports around the world. Back then you had to stand in a long line to check in and uh, we created a kiosk uh, that we put in airports around the world that people use today check themselves in. Since then, I've been involved in a total of eight startups. Um, most, like I said, mostly tech, but not entirely. We've had our successes and failures. Uh, success is being part of Priceline.com, Booking.com, UBID.com, companies that eventually IPO'd. We had other companies uh, that were acquired, and then we had some really bad ideas that just failed miserably. And in, in along the way, I've also uh, done startups and entertainment, uh, launched a music company and a film and television company. Um, and then I spend my time now, uh, really I dedicated the rest of my life, uh, like, you know, like, like you're doing, Abe, to mentoring startups and entrepreneurs, do it all around the world. I serve as the chairman of the Global Entrepreneurship Network now, and we help entrepreneurs. We're on the ground in 180 countries. So that's how I spend my time today helping other people launch ideas and scale businesses. I always ask this question is, what is your long-term strategy? You know, your exit strategy. Do you want, and going IPO in MENA is not as common because we, you know, MENA is 20 plus country, depends on how we, and li like, you know, obviously everybody would love to list on you know the new york stock exchange or london or like the big the big ones but you know they need to also have that those volumes absolutely and and you are right we work with uh i work with companies all over mina and normally pre-covid in fact when covid hit i was traveling across mina i was oh, in right. asia and africa visiting startups and giving talks um and you are correct the the ipo part really is not part of the strategy there um yeah where we focus on how to launch a company and the real focus on MENA that people need help with is how to scale. A lot of times they get their company up and running, they've got some revenue, but they don't really know how to achieve, uh, you know, that sort of hockey stick scale. So in MENA, our focus is with startups is the scale up process. What do I have to do to prepare my company and what's a go to market strategy so that I have a chance to grow regionally and then globally and really scale my business. That's what we focus on in MENA. You know, what is the main component or pillars of these uh, of, uh, that an ecosystem needs to build? The first part is inspiration. It's the awareness that entrepreneurship simply means that you have picked a problem in the world that you want to solve, something you want to make better, and that's your approach. That's inspiration. The ecosystem needs more of that. The second or awareness, the second part is education. A lot of people, this is what I hear every day in my life. I have an idea, I just don't know where to start. Yep. Every day somebody calls me, I have an idea, I don't know what to do first, where do I start? Yep. So educational content from private organizations, from accelerators and, and incubators, and then even from universities and schools, every place that we can find, provide more education on what is entrepreneurship and how do you launch a business. Mm -hmm. Education's the second one. Then obviously we need funding. So organizing, for example, at, 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 at Gen, we put together something called the G-Band, Global Business Angel Networks. So putting together a better investment company. And then the last piece I would say is policy. In some countries, it's really hard to start a company, right? Or it's really expensive and painful. And so we meet with governments and we tell the policymakers, make it easy 
for people to start businesses where you live, immigration issues, because talent is part of the ecosystem. I won't start my company in a country where I can't get anyone to help me or work on it. So what are the hiring and firing laws in the country? What does it take to register a company? And then similarly, even are there tax incentives or tax breaks for investors? And, and in some countries, as you well know, in some countries, if you launch a business and fail, it's a legal issue, right? If you, if in my country, you just file for bankruptcy, it's not good, uh, but it's not like you go to jail or anything. In some countries, it's a huge problem to have a business failure. So those are all the pieces of an ecosystem and every one of them helps a startup and an entrepreneur. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. And um, I think, um, you know, I, I'm sure you've been to Dubai and the UAE many times. And um, I think this this country has been trying to do that for the last 15 yes. years plus. And, uh, you know, I, right now there's so many free zones and now the laws even are changing for normal uh, company, uh, you know, like normal, we call them mainland uh, registrations. And, um, and it, it's, it's, I think I agree that you know corporates cannot uh, employ everybody, and there needs to be right. a lot of entrepreneurs to create more jobs. Um, as you know, Mina itself is a relatively very young population, so you know we need a lot of these entrepreneurs to come and create a lot of jobs because you know employment will be one of the main. Uh, segments to tackle for any government uh, in this region because obviously you know uh, the population is re relatively very young um so you know in, in saying that you know i, I want to ask you about you know bridging the gap between the corporates and startups you know i work in an accelerator right now and um i i see companies uh startups really struggle to deal with corporates and vice versa because one is too big and too rigid while the other one is too small and too agile and you know i i always see you know by the time the corporate's ready for the startup well guess what the startup's either pivoted or no longer there or they've moved another country right so give me some examples from what you've worked with like like how do you see that working corporate accelerators is a new trend and it, it didn't start in the u.s either really it was led by europe the yeah. first good ones i saw uh, <clears throat> were some corporate accelerators in Europe where big corporates finally said, got this idea, and here's how it should work. And, and for any corporates listening to this, um, you have some problem, business problem that you're working on in your company, but uh, cha entrepreneurial challenges are a really cool new idea. So you as a corporate, you say to the entrepreneurs where you live, so if you're in Dubai, you're in Abu Dhabi, you put out the word, that we are going to award a cash prize to the best solution to a problem that we're trying to solve anyway. You give them your work, right? As a corporate, you say, our corporation is trying to increase the speed of our network. I'm just making up a dumb example, right? Yep. And you ask entrepreneurs and startups all over, suggest our ideas, so they're corporate challenges, and suggest a better idea. So instead of just your corporate IT department coming up with their one suggestion internally, you have 50 different innovators out there sending you 50 different ideas. So you get way more innovation and then you fund just the winner. And the cost, the amount of money that you give a startup is way less than it typically costs you and your big corporate structure to innovate, but it's significant money to the startup. So it costs less money, you get more ideas and it's faster. So what we're seeing is a new trend, not enough in MENA yet in general, but that's the idea. The corporation says, this is a problem our company's working on. Entrepreneurs give us some ideas. You give a prize to the entrepreneurs and then the more sophisticated ones are actually funding accelerators. So the accelerator is funded by the corporate and the companies in there have to specifically be working on industry solutions for the industry that the corporate's in. And the corporate gets the first right of refusal. If one of the startups comes up with a great idea, that corporate has the first shot at buying that company or that technology. So I think corporate accelerators and corporate challenges are an important new trend that Mina's got to get on. 
what kind of trends are you seeing uh, even globally or even in MENA? The big trend, as you said, is starting <coughs> to find out is two things. One is better use of data in the construction industry yes. to better do budgeting and projections and forecasting um, and to just to better manage a business in general, to look at data post construction project, right? For generals and subs and to optimize their performance, their spend um, on materials, um, on labor. So we're seeing better use of data in the industry. But I think the big one is we're seeing a lot more tech-based service offerings. And so we started looking at how can we better use technology in the construction industry to improve workflow and process. So I'm excited, uh, you know, uh, for the big five because there's so much to talk about and how we can improve a construction industry with technology. Um, would you like to give our entrepreneurs or the founders or even the corporates any tips uh, about the ecosystem or anything you would like to close off with before we Sure. I, I, I think that the, the thing I would like to end with is uh, cooperation beats competition. And what I mean by that is a lot of times people don't think or don't want to in the construction industry reach out to other companies in the business be, to say, we can probably go farther together than either one of us could alone. And so that isn't just within other industry companies, that means reaching out to tech companies, right? Typically in construction, most of the companies are launched and run by people whose expertise is building things, not technology. They're coming from construction. So reaching out to a tech company and saying, could we partner and maybe develop or a big data company or an analytics company, or if you see a construction company that's <coughs> complementary to yours, they're not bidding on the same jobs or they're bidding on the same jobs, but not the same part, right? You might be in structural steel and and they only do concrete work or whatever it might be, right? Okay. The point is, or maybe they're electrical uh, and, 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 you know, and you're in the carpentry side, whatever it is, there are opportunities for you to partner and create a one plus one equals five. Um, and I don't see enough of that industry. So that's my advice to both corporates and entrepreneurs. Let's reach out to each other within the industry and form partnerships where the new entity we create is way stronger than any of us would have before. And that what, what winds up happening is we all own a smaller piece of a way bigger pie instead of each of us owning 100% of our own little pie. That's my, my closing advice. Thank you very much, Jeff, for your time. Very wise words. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in UAA sometime again soon. Thank you for tuning into our episode. Please visit www.startupcity.ae to see more episodes and to know more about the Big Five.